Hello and welcome to the Runners World podcast with me, Rick Pearson. Me, Ben Hobson. And me, Jane Maguire. Today we're talking with running coach Tom Craggs about bass training. We're all about that bass this week. <laughs> well, Rick, well, insert that... the jingle here, Rick. <laughs> Get the guitar. <laughs> well, so, and we could also go. We could also go Public Enemy on this one. Isn't it? Bass. How low can you go? That one. You know, there's there's all sorts of musical things we could yeah. bring to this podcast. <laughs> You're right. I'd, I'd have to. Put, I'd actually have to be playing a bass guitar, wouldn't I? I feel like that's it demands that. Maybe a double bass, a oh, bit jazzy. It's too much bass. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Anyway, moving on. Jane, how's your running? How's my running? It's do you know what? It's going okay actually. I'm still. I was thinking this morning actually. Still doing the joy plan. Has it been a year? I think it's been oh a, my year. God. a year. Yeah, nearly joy. a year. Eleven months. Eleven months of the joy plan. Didn't do any it's... races, did I? But here I am. <laughs> Is, Still, are, you have, are you are you enjoying it? Are you are you enjoying your running more than ever? Yeah, I think I am. I think I'm doing about probably about twenty miles a week. So I'm not you know not breaking any records, but um, still getting over the old ankle injury that came in the summer. And yeah, just kind of just enjoying it. Still running for joy. Still doing faster bits when I want. Still doing a lot of peloton cycling. You know, just doing doing exercise I like has been fun but how about you both lovely i think the bit i think the joy plan is possibly our greatest export from this thing yeah, yeah i think thing so is, I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's the thing that's referenced the most i think, um, I'm just, I think it's just a, a plan we should all follow and maybe maybe i wasn't actually maybe i didn't invent it maybe i copied it from someone but i think it's worked <laughs> i think it's worked yeah it has yeah. It's fantastic um yeah running's good Everything's going quite nicely. The forest is looking exceptional with all its autumn colours. And uh, I went running with uh, my neighbour and a couple of mates uh, yesterday. And I did that. I don't know if this happens with you guys when you meet up with people, but if someone else is in charge of the route, you don't. Your assumption is that they've got like a certain distance in their head that matches yours. And right. it turns out that it was much further than that. <laughs> so I was like, I thought, all oh, right. And Josh was like, oh, Josh is my neighbor. He was like, oh, we're going to go for a run. John comes like, yeah, sure. It's Sunday. We've all got kids and stuff. It'll probably be like a 10K. It's an hour. We're probably going to have, you know, slice out of an hour of the day and go for it. Um, 20K later, Whoa. we got home. <laughs> got home. I was just a bit like, oh, that was incredibly lovely. And what a lovely treat that was. I've got to go and do some parenting now. But, you know, it was like, <laughs> that was the, that was the toss up. So, um. I had a lovely, a very lovely run yesterday, which was through the forest with some people, which is very nice. I don't really often get out with a group. There's four of us. And so it was very nice to just sort of run and chat and do all that sort of oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. So it was lovely. Yeah, it was a very nice day. I've been, um, I've, I think my run has gone backwards slightly. Okay. But I'm trying to reach a kind of zen spot with it. So it's a... Uh, my, my my troublesome knee has been amazing this year and I obviously like I did half marathon and all that sort of stuff and for the first time about two weeks ago I was like oh it's starting to hurt a little bit and then it just got a bit worse and I was like I was probably running maybe five times a week and not thinking about um it being a problem at all and I think actually what I need to do is be a little more cautious this first year go back to like three runs a week I've got a, I've got a rower in indoors so I think a couple of rows three runs bit of joy taking some yeah. of the, the harder stuff out and I think that's actually how I'm going to have to uh, have to play it but I actually don't mind I kind of think I haven't really got a choice in this and I quite like variety in a training plan even when you're training for marathons or longer more involved things so I kind of think actually I could try to t- turn this into an advantage become a, a run rower yeah the row runner I mean yeah. there's a new sport you like swim run before Rick so the run row is now going to be you run to the Thames, you get in your boat, <laughs> you row somewhere, you get out and you run again. I like it. Perfect, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It might catch on. Maybe this is the I next challenge. Bit, I think in Canada, you have it with like, um, I think it's called portaging or something where you carry your kayak across the land and then jump in the water and it's like a bit of an adventure sport. So the Canadians are all space. over it. Yeah. Canadians <laughs> are all over it. You think you thought of something new and then guess what? Canada's done it. Yeah. Yeah. Although I um, think if right, you were running with a canoe through London, people would think tricky. you'd stolen that. Mm, yeah. yeah it would have to be a blow-up one. Happened. There must be a blow-up one. Yeah. I'll look into this. Look into this. Anyway. Keep us updated, please. <laughs> <laughs> so we were chatting about um, base training with, with Tom Craggs this week. So, I mean, my understanding of base training, and there'll be more on this, obviously, 
is it's a sort of pre-training training program mm. so like you know kind of something that hopefully a lot of spring marathon people will be thinking about now have you ever have you ever done it jane and in the marathons that you're training for like the kind of base training and then and then getting into the specifics of yeah like i a think training program lewis did a lot of this where he was like the only way you get better at a marathon is being consistent so people sign up to a race and they think oh i've got it doesn't start for 10 like i don't need to start training for six weeks and they just do nothing whereas actually if you start from i guess it doesn't really work with a lot of marathons does it because you don't get in in time to even do a base <laughs> training but if you do have the joy like the luxury of doing that i think it's then not as much of a shock is it i think sometimes yeah, exactly. even like the first yeah. week of a marathon training plan you're like what the hell is this and actually if you've kind of got a bait i'm not a running coach but it makes sense to me <laughs> yeah no i agree yeah even those kind of like the beginner running plans you're a bit like oh you've, if you're going, going from zero yeah. to like three runs even like zero to 10 miles that's quite a shocker for your body i think yeah. rather than if you're like well i've been running once or twice a week anyway yeah um, this is this is more of a kind of like natural step up yeah uh, but i guess actually you would have time wouldn't you because if you got into london you would already know by now and you wouldn't need to yeah. start your training plan till january so start the right now listen to this podcast and go for a run now that's what we're telling people yeah. aren't we just a small, just a short one though. Just, just a small, a one. just a base. Or just, you know, do some, do <laughs> just some, a base, just a base. Do, one. do some strength and conditioning, guys. This is this is the time. This is the time to do it. <laughs> but uh, Tom, Tom's the guy. He knows what he's talking about. So just hold on, oh, we, hold fire yeah. for the rest of this podcast, <laughs> and then and then you'll be educated. Well, let's, should we get him on then? Oh, God, let's do it. Guest of the week. Sometimes on the phone Could be an athlete Could be a physio Or a complete unknown So our guest this week is Tom Craggs who has a monthly column in Runner's World He's one of the UK's foremost running coaches That's true Tom isn't it? Everyone thinks that um, Well yeah I mean Runner's World have to say it um, <laughs> because because I'm writing in there every month but um, um whether anybody else thinks it is is at this stage irrelevant. <laughs> I've been platformed platformed enough to believe my own uh, hype. So we wanted to talk to you about um, base training. So it feels like a good time to talk about base training. Maybe people who are going to do a spring marathon have heard the term base training. Maybe they don't know exactly what it means. So could we start by saying, like, what exactly do we mean when we say base training? Yeah, so um, it's a term which is thrown about a lot. And like a lot of things in, um, in in sports generally, unfortunately, it probably means different things to different people. Right. Um, and, I, and I guess that the, there's a traditional view of what base training means, or like a, almost like a historical view. Um, and then there's probably a slightly more modern perspective on it. So the, the historical view would be that it is a period of, it has been tended to be a period of time um, often between six and 12 weeks, where runners focus purely on lower intensity running, um, often in slightly higher volumes. So building, and you, you can do that either by building the length of some of your runs or building the frequency of your runs or, or whatever. But time spent at lower intensities um, with less interval training less tempo running and really focusing on building what you might call um so where we ought to be careful a term we ought to be careful with but for want of a better term building an aerobic foundation so lots of lower intensity running um and building the kind of base of your pyramid of your running of which you then layer on your kind of your more intense training later down the line um would be the the, the sort of traditional view of it um, slightly more modern view of it would be that a lot of those elements are still correct and that it is a period of training where you're focusing on building the foundations of your training to set up for more specific training later down the line. Um, but that doesn't solely consist of easy running. You know, we mix different intensities in there still. Um, we work on different components of fitness. <clears throat> and so I think the way that we tend to, as coaches to view base training now is is perhaps a little bit more varied than the traditional conception of it. 
it's not necessarily different to what people did do decades ago. I think people still varied their training back then, but it's more like yeah. the, 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 a lot of the assumptions made on base training, we 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 vary out a little bit more. So it, it's, okay. it still involves mixed training, different intensities, but it's really about a period that is setting you up for your training later down the line, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's probably why it's such an important part of the training cycle, right? Because it's the foundation. That's why the base training is given that time to do, to grow and you know you said six to 12 weeks that's why people focus on it for probably a slightly longer block than other elements of the training block yeah so i guess it's a it's a period of time when you would when you're trying to develop the general components of your fitness so a broad span of fitness if that makes sense yeah the broad general foundations of your fitness um we then move into periods as you get closer to your race of specifying your training. So that means beginning to cut that training down to focus on the bits that are going to help you most with whatever race it is you're building up towards, whether it's a 5K, whether it's a marathon or an ultra, or whatever it is. Um, the base training period is a period where we have a more general view of your training, <clears throat> which is often why um, it is a good opportunity to kind of go and do lower intensity running. Mm. Um, because you know you don't have to worry quite as much around I need to hit x minute per mile for this period of time in order to get a PB that's not quite your focus so it gives you the opportunity to to do higher volumes of low intensity training but it is also a period where you might kind of go well maybe I need to do some stuff to work on my pure speed or my strength and conditioning or whatever it is as well. Um, so it's it, it, it's the nuts and bolts, I suppose. And you, you collect together those nuts and bolts and then you build those nuts and bolts into something sort of substantive in the later training phases. But it's a period where you collect together all those tools, if you like, and start to put more tools in your armory. If you're going to look at it in terms of, um, say, marathon training, Tom, which is probably something that people might be thinking about starting say their spring marathon uh program mid-december or, or early january how does what does base training look like in those terms and is it actually markedly different to the start of say a marathon program or actually we're we talking about things that are broadly similar i i think there's a i think there's a lot of crossover um Although I do think it depends on your level of experience as a, as a runner, yeah. and often we often talk about this and kind of go, what base training might look like for a slightly more performance focused runner might be a little bit different from somebody tackling their first marathon and they're just trying to get round. Yeah. Um, so if you are at more at that sort of performance end and you're thinking, well, in April I want to be running whatever time for the marathon, you have a specific time goal in mind. Yeah. Um, the early, the, the foundation periods of your training right now um, might not include huge amounts of running around that goal race pace, but it, they are, um, you, you, you have, a, a, I guess, a long-term view where you kind of go, well, the kind of endurance aspects of my training and the speed aspects of my training, I'm, I'm, I'm carving out the fundamentals now. So that might mean um, you know, you're doing hill sprints, or you're, or you're, you're doing strides. You're doing stuff that is actually quite quick, and you're doing combining that with a lot of easy and steady running. Then, as you get closer to your race, you're 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 doing more and more of that time spent running at your goal race pace, if that makes sense. So, so it is it's 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 those converging lines we've talked about in the past, and 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 your base period that that is that those um, key aspects of your training might be quite. Um, varied um, and as you get closer particularly with the marathon y y your training paces might be a little bit less varied and much more focused down on what you want to do on race day I think if you're a bit newer to running and you're running your first marathon and you're just looking to get round there wouldn't be quite as much there might not be quite as much variety of stimulus probably your base period of your or your like setup period before marathon training is probably just a case of getting used to a bit more time on feet and you can worry about getting faster as you move through your training a bit but what you're trying to do is you know i always used to say this for somebody tackling their first marathon let's say you're you're running a marathon for charity in london in april next year you really trying to get yourself into place by christmas or turn of the year where you're able to tackle perhaps 10 miles in, in a long run could be a really good place to go it doesn't really matter what that 10 miles looks like it might be very very slow but it's just 
it's conditioning your body to just get used to more time on feet. So there's a bit of subtlety and a bit of difference depending on the level of, of running you're at. And I think the more experience you get, the more diverse that, that uh, foundation period probably is. Is there a sort of a historical, uh, I don't know, lineage to where this base training idea come comes from is it is it something that was adopted early in just general is it, it just, is it does it stem from like physiological like necessity or is it actually a sort of a, a, a training format that someone has pioneered yeah i mean a bit a bit of both i mean there's definitely f- kind of physiological logic to it yeah in a sense of um uh, but both from a um I guess a, a fitness point of view, ultimately for the majority of races that most runners are going to be tackling, they are primarily um, relying on a strong aerobic system. So the ability to go and run consistently and frequently at lower intensities is very beneficial. So there is a like sound logic to it. And, and actually you can do all the interval and high intensity sessions in the world, but if you can't plug together those intervals in a sustained way, to kind of see you through a long period of running, whether it's 10K, whether it's 26.2 miles, whatever it is, all of the interval work and speed work in the world isn't going to help you. So there's there's this kind of sound, I guess, physiological principles to it. But I think the concept of of, of like base training and like a pyramid of training, if you like, where you build the foundations and then you layer on the more specific or more intense periods on top, it's been around, the concept's been around a long time, but probably most famously Lydiard would be the coach who's, who's kind of best known for, for that, those principles of, of build the foundations and then get more specific as you go through. We might do, you know, the, the, the traditional or the way that a lot of people have thought about the kind of Lydiard, who was, who was um, a, a very well-known coach in the 60s and 70s. Um, the way that a lot of people have approached Lydiard training is not necessarily the way that he did it as a coach himself if that makes sense which is why we often ended up with people going well I'm base training so I'm just going to do a lot of of very easy and lower intensity running that's not actually quite what Lydiard did but regardless the principles were very much in his narrative which is you've got this pyramid of training and that bottom bit of the pyramid is an absolutely essential and without that all of the quality work, quality, that's probably a bad term to use, but all of the intense work that you do later down the line is 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 built on really shaky foundations. So get the foundations. They are the thing that will provide, you know, 80%, 90% of the fitness you need for a marathon and 80%, 90% of the fitness you need for a 5K come from that those foundations. And then we sharpen it up with the, the, the top of the pyramid later on. So, so there's some sound physiological principles, yes, but in terms of the structure of training and almost the periodization of training, as we'd call it, pretty much stems from, from Lydiard and a lot of Lydiard's thinking. And it's been developed by other coaches and it's been refined and it's been developed. But um, if you want to understand the basis of it, definitely go and read some of Lydiard's, Lydiard's stuff. Apply it to your life and make it specific to you in a modern world. But yeah, it's, just, it's always a, it's a good starting point, I think. This is the Runner's World Podcast. I, I really like the idea of base training, Tom. I don't, I don't know if you agree with this, but I think there's a lots of kind of, four, say, four-month marathon training programs. Um, and they can just, if you haven't done a lot of running, so you're literally going into a marathon cold. Yeah. Even after, t- after two or three weeks, you c- your body can be doing something or being asked to do something that's so sort of alien to it that the chances of injury, are, I think, become extremely high without something like base training. And I, I think that, when people talk about marathon training, we should be talking about, if you're new to it, it's kind of six months and, and at least, you know, like a month and a half of that being base training. Would you would you subscribe to that? Yeah, and and I think one of the things we always have to be careful of um, as, as runners, and I say this as somebody who's written, you know, countless 12, 14, 16-week training plans in the build-up to, to marathons, um, that... The thing is, it's not actually a long period of time to train for running 26.2 yeah. miles fast. And so what ends up happening is if you're following a 16-week training plan and definitely a 12- to 14-week training plan, um, pretty much every week the training progresses, gets a little mm. bit harder. You know, things are pushing along every week. And that's actually really intense for your body, a really intense process for your body to, to go through. Generally, bodies don't work in an entirely linear 
progression like that. Mm. So always being careful when you're looking at a generic training plan to understand that if you're going to follow something that sees you training get a little bit harder in almost like a linear fashion for for 12, 14, 16 weeks, probably in order for your body to hold together, you need something to set up to do that. You, you need a foundation of training that isn't quite as kind of linear. It's, it's a difficult one because from a coaching point of view, just whacking a, 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 a like a foundation period of training, training plan into a magazine doesn't tend to, it's not, it's not quite it's as appealing people, for people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Um, but I would, I would work off the assumption that whenever you see a training plan like that, most of us who have written them are, are working off the basis you have a foundation of training in place before you even start that process. Of course, there are some training plans that are literally written for beginners, you know, that, that guide you through, look, let's just get you around a marathon. You've got 16 weeks, you're starting from scratch, we'll get you around, often as a mix of running and walking. Um, but if you don't have that foundation in place, don't assume that those training plans will work for you. And don't assume that you can shortcut that foundation. You're better, I would say, to, to do less specific training and still do the foundation period, if that makes sense. And even if yeah, it means you only yeah. get eight to 10 weeks of like more specific marathon training, you're better to go through the process of patiently building and allowing your body to absorb like lower intensity running, you know, strides, hills, some strength work, whatever your base training looks like. If you shortcut it, there probably is a slightly higher risk of injury, but you're also you know, missing some of the fundamental elements of what, what, what it takes to run a good marathon, ultimately, which is higher volumes of lower intensity running. Um, does, does there, yeah. Is there a crossover then, Tom, do you think, between in that base, when you're building that base up, it not having to be completely running centric and you can make it, as you say, less linear. So you're sort of, it, obviously you're needing to condition your body for running, but can the base period actually contain cross training and other cardio based things yeah and it's really it's really important isn't it that that um and i think one of the dangers with because most runners enjoy racing and they like to race the, the problem is like most people have always got a race just around the corner that they feel is important to them so they never allow the time to do the sorts of training that 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 work well in a, in a foundation period of training and a base period of training um, because it does involve doing stuff that might not be as easy to do when you're six weeks out from a marathon, four weeks out from a marathon. And that would be um, not only cross training, <clears throat> so getting on the bike, getting in the pool, getting on a, an elliptical machine, but also your strength and conditioning, your drills, you know, um, is, is there masses of value in doing high intensity hill sprints in your kind of really specific period before the marathon? Well, not really. I mean, there's some value in it, but it's not particularly specific to the marathon, but it's still really important for your long-term development. So where do you do it? You know, if you don't allow the time to, to build those nuts and bolts and you're always in some kind of specific period of training for an event, one event or another, you never get the chance to do those. So it's no wonder that runners feel like they don't have enough time to do their strength and conditioning or, or cross training because they don't allow the time so you're, you're absolutely right it, it's a period where less specific periods of training which jumping on an elliptical is obviously less specific to a marathon than going out for a run but it still can be a critical way that you can build training volumes um so yes more variety definitely is one is one it's a funny one to say more variety in a base period because often people think of it almost being less in variety you know it, they think of it being just loads of easy low intensity training but more variety in the, in the training modalities you can use if that makes sense yeah get because you because you don't need to be quite as specific so you definitely get in the pool enjoy and have a mental but it's a period for a mental break as well isn't it um um uh, and you can still obviously you're still working your heart and lungs and, and muscles and what have you when you're cross training and, and the same with strength I, and conditioning so i always found that those um those base periods were also kind of like skill acquisition was quite an, like an, a key part of that. And and that's one of the things when I have sort of, you know, I guess dedicated foundation periods of training, we'd be doing a lot of stuff like running drills, 
um, mixed running and strength and conditioning sessions, very short hills, you know, like eight, 10, 12 second hills that are really focused on almost, as you say, almost like the neurological aspects of, of like fast twitch muscle fiber engagement and all of that sort of stuff that we then can kind of extend into more traditional running sessions later down the line. Um, but you've got the space to do them. Whereas if you've done let's say you've done 30 k's worth of hard running at the weekend expecting yourself to go out on a tuesday and hit really high intensity genuine sprinting uphill it's a really difficult thing to do because you're still carrying fatigue from the weekend so it's a period where because because your fatigue you're not as fatigued from the specific the really big challenging specific sessions it allows you to kind of go and do other aspects that require an awful lot of like neurological kind of stimulus and, and everything else and do them really well if that makes sense so drills plyometrics hill sprints that require that kind of zip and pop and speed is really difficult when you're fatigued from from big long runs or big long sessions or whatever so again you're, you're absolutely right it's a great opportunity to, to work on that stuff um, and similarly with the, the strength and conditioning however you do it um, obviously some people would do it, it it depends on you as an individual person what your strength and conditioning looks like but it's certainly a good opportunity to um, if it's something you want to do and is right for you to lift a little bit heavier for mm. example to, to, to work on some more kind of explosive movement patterns and whatever with your strength and conditioning um, because again you're not carrying that the, the same level of muscular and kind of neurological fatigue from, from the remainder of your training yeah in your experience, Tom, is there, is there a certain type of runner who's particularly bad at kind of buying into base training? You might be like, no, 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 no. That sounds really dull. What's going to be the benefit of me jogging around for a month or so? Or what would you say to those runners? Yeah, I think a lot of us, and myself included, and uh, yes. um, I think me, often what the difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I think the the difficult thing is we we are very often. Um, uh, sort of quite short-term goal motivated Mm. and obviously in running a lot of people set their goals framed around racing and specific races whether it's i want to complete this race or i want to run a pb at this distance um and you're trying to cram everything in so let's say you look in a 12 month window and you're trying to cram stuff in actually gets quite difficult you want to do let's say you want to do two marathons a year but you also want to pb at 5k 10k maybe you want to do a bit of cross country or whatever it's an awful lot to fit in a year and we're not good as runners at making sacrifices and kind of going no actually i have to if i want to do the best i possibly can or develop myself physically as much as i can i have to make sacrifices the best runners in the world do it all the time they have to you can't do everything you can't be good at everything all the time um so i think a lot of it is about reframing um goals and 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 we've talked about this before and i know it is a cliche and it's a cliche i use a lot but it it is a period where you have to you do have to be a bit more focused on goals that are about the process of training because you won't see immediate results necessarily Mm. from doing this pro it's not quite as um you know you can if you suddenly drop in a load of interval training into your training plan you will probably notice some reasonably quick gains in terms of fitness if your body's ready to do it mm, um yeah. with this it, it just it, there is a bit a bit more kind of faith required um and some people might even feel like they're losing fitness and that scares people you yeah. know if you kind yeah. of think well I've, yeah. done, I've gone for a period of like I've been doing these long long runs or i've been doing these kind of big interval training sessions with my local club or whatever it is and now all of a sudden i'm i'm doing something quite different and i'm not doing that it feels like you're going easy on yourself or you've backed off or and it isn't quite like that it's it's and it's it's because we get really stuck in these short term sort of periods endurance you know that really to get in all the stuff you want to get in you might be looking at a year two years three years of, of planning um, and when you start to look at it over a longer term then making a sacrifice of you know six 12 18 weeks whatever it is is a sacrifice worth paying it's only when you get really stuck into right next next oh I'm, I'm fit now so i want to go and get another pb here and here and i'll maximize um i was actually chatting to a runner at the weekend about this and she's just come off the back of a marathon where she ran a brilliant pb and mm. now she's dropped in a load of more races and she's got a load more pbs and i'm kind of going well look at some point you need to stop you need yeah, to stop yeah. absorb everything you've done 
almost lose a little, not almost detrain a little bit, or at least give your body some adaptive time and then build the foundations. And you'll do be doing that from a higher level, a higher base than you were last year. Um, but yes, there will be some sacrifices. You will come back to running feeling a little bit rusty. The first interval session back will feel pretty rough, but you'll, you'll get back into it. And the idea is we go through these cycles where we just we're building up each time we go through this block but that doesn't mean it's a this linear process and i think sometimes people find that really difficult it, of Definitely. like oh a step back to go two steps forwards it mm. feels like you know you're, it's you're a leap of faith on. isn't it in some senses yeah, yeah. if we're talking longevity it, it, it is if we're talking like longevity and with running and people mm. sort of pitching it you know wanting to have long careers where they are achieving goals that they want and not sort of falling foul of injury or any of those things i feel like that the base is the bit that they need is the most crucial to longevity right like that's kind of the area where as you say the sacrifice is made for the future for future you when it comes to running yeah i think so because you know the stresses of you know a typical sort of tuesday thursday saturday kind of interval training program or whatever are um eventually um over time will eventually start to you'll start to plateau doing that anyway even if you do survive it injury free um because ultimately the body needs a variety of of different stimulus and different sort of um training training approaches but i think just generally from a healthy training point of view you need those periods um of 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 backing off in some areas you might be pushing on in other areas but backing off in some areas and i think some of that is mental as well of just maintaining the passion and love for it and yeah absolutely physically ultimately most people you're going to run pbs from several years worth of sustained training not just 16 weeks of really good training yes you can move your fitness along but that's not where your best pb your lifetime pbs will be set that will come from a long period of training a, a good block of, of 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 years plugged together and I, and when you're looking at it in that length of time these base training periods are really key in plugging all that stuff together both absorbing your higher intensity more race specific stuff and then laying down you know new muscle fibers and tissues and and, and kind of healthy lower intensity periods to then push again it's that kind of push back off push back off sort of uh, flow with training that most of us we just push we push we push we break we get frustrated and then we build back up after breaking and we're straight back into the intensity again and then we we break again and it's you, you're chasing stuff the whole time and it is it's a bit of a zen sort of thing but it is a period where you're not going to be chasing stuff as much you know you, you're mm. going to be embracing the kind of slow burn i suppose yeah. Of, yeah. Of, uh, of fitness so if anyone had a say they had a race coming up uh within what should be say a base training period say someone's got a spring marathon but actually they've also got a race that's in like early december how do you sort of marry those two yeah and I, and I think it is really important from from what we were just saying around you know people being goal goal driven and you don't want to you don't want to have to to take away everybody's opportunity to enjoy racing and to be around other people you know because often it's it's those more intense moments whether it's races or or interval sessions or whatever where people get to socialize with running and yeah obviously you need to be really careful about not just removing all of that look the the odd race is not going to fundamentally damage your base training period and one of the things that one of the myths about base training is that as soon as you go beyond a certain level of intensity you're suddenly losing all the benefits when it's just not it's not it's not true it's not how bodies work so a you can afford some you can still afford to do some higher intensity races this is what the majority of your training looks like that is important but you might also just kind of think about well maybe you could use the races a little bit differently so maybe you could specifically go out and run those races at a slightly lower intensity you could pay somebody else you could go and run at you know you could go and run a, 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 a 10k at more of a marathon intensity or whatever it is you know you could you can mix things up and again you, you know base training looks different for different people because it depends on on what you're going to be doing in your goal race obviously um but it, i would, it don't feel like you need to cut out all racing and all intensity but it's thinking about you know your this block of time what are your overall objectives and anything that's really getting in the way of that which is you know maybe you're banging out a 10k every other week or you know you got 
a couple of 10Ks, a few half marathons, so all of, and you suddenly start to worry about getting PBs in them, all of a sudden it's not a base training period anymore. So by all means, go and race your 10K, your half marathon, but set realistic expectations for the training phase you're in, and then you won't get tempted to go and batter it or be really hard on yourself, or drop in training that you maybe isn't best placed at this time of year. So still race, but set sensible expectations based upon what you're trying to get out of this period, I would say. Great. Tom, thanks very much for coming on the Runners World Podcast again. Great to uh, hear you talk about base training. And um, I'm sure we'll have you back on again soon if, you, if, you, if you'll come back on. Absolutely. You know, I, yeah, I always love it. It's always good to chat to you guys. And um, thanks very much for having me. So that brings us to the end of this week's Runners World Podcast. Thanks very much to our guest, Tom Craggs, and to you, of course, for listening. You can subscribe to three issues of uh, Runners World for just £5. Head to hearstmagazines.co.uk slash Runners World podcast to get this exclusive listener offer. And you can listen to the Runners World UK podcast on Acast, iTunes, all your favourite podcast apps. Just search Runners World UK and please do subscribe. Thanks for listening and we'll see you again next week.